years, he was an informant spilling the secrets of the Chicago mob to the FBI. The story of Red Wimet. I was told by some people at the time that he put out a million dollar contract on my head. Hello, folks. It is Wednesday, October 5th, 2022. And we have Adam with us from Mob Vlog. Adam, why don't you join us here? How's it going, Red? It's going great, buddy. There we go. <laughs> technical, technical problems. That's little switches. That's all good. So... We're going to talk today about Ray Ryan. Yes, we are. I have not even heard this name until you said, hey, let's talk about Ray Ryan. And I said, who the hell is Ray Ryan? Ray Ryan. Marshall told me the story about Ray Ryan, but it was a little more, more controversial than what is written in the papers. Marshall told me that him and Johnny Delmonico grabbed him. They were supposed to collect 500,000 from him, uh, but they didn't. And they extorted him allegedly for $60,000. In 1964, he went uh, to trial and he lost and got 10 years in prison. And when he got out in 1974, he swore he was going to get even for 10 years he cost him. But he told him for a million a year, he would keep him alive. And Ray, Ray Ryan said, no way. You don't need the heat. And as a result, it's never been solved. But Alvin Johnson Rogers testified before a grand jury that Marshall did do the job. But they couldn't prove it. No eyewitnesses, no nothing. He was brought in. He was questioned. Naturally, he took the fifth. And that was it. I see. By the way, um, I'm, I just want to say hello to everybody that's in here. And um, Anthony, welcome to the team, buddy. Yes. <laughs> I hope that you. Uh, I hope that you can get some use out of that. Maybe it'll help you create um, content. That's what. That's what I was thinking was because you can pre-record uh, stuff and then you can post it later. But you could load up all your pictures, videos that you want to show during your uh, pre-recorded thing as you narrate it, and then maybe you have to do it makes your editing easier. I don't know. Just a thought. So, anyway. When you're done with the pictures, please delete them. <laughs> Don't delete any of our broadcasts, Anthony. No. <laughs> I made you an admin, so don't delete any of the, <laughs> any of them. All right. Anyway, I know you won't. But um, uh, my mom and grannies called me Billy, called me Kraut. What? William Kirchmayer. My mom and grannies called me Billy, called me Kraut. Okay. Oh. All right, we'll just call him Kraut then from now on. Kraut's okay, on. Okay, instead of me saying Bill, I'll say Kraut. Yeah, the Kraut. All right, it's good with us. Good with us. Good with you. All right, guys. Ryan Brown, what's going on? Homan Sanders, your uh, your uh, photos coming, my man. And uh, it's uh, so back to this Bob Ryan. Uh, before, we, before we do, I want to give a shout out to Ryan Brown. Ryan Brown, you said on the last show here that you really you went through my book and you enjoyed it, please write a review on Amazon. Good, bad, or indifferent. I'm 99 reviews on there. I need more. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Hey, and one more before we get into Ray Ryan. Devin Mora, Morrell, Morrell, if you're watching, um, I'm looking forward to meeting you this uh, upcoming Saturday. So I hope that uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope that uh, you are too. It's going to be fun. So. And thank you for the Super Chat sticker. Yeah, thanks for the Super Chat. Exactly. All right. So, um, so Ray Ryan. So, so let's get into this. Do you know? Oh, you have an article line, don't you? Read the article. All right. You want me to do this? We'll do this. Okay. Biography. Let Let me just start. This is a. This, let me just throw this out there. This is Wikipedia. Just so you guys know where the source is coming from. Okay. Raymond R John Ryan, born in 1904, January 4th, in Watertown, Wisconsin. He died October 18th, 1977. 
was an American professional gambler, oil man, promoter, and developer. Described as having a larger-than-life personality, he mingled with prominent business people and movie stars, as well as card sharps and mobsters on his path to fame and fortune. His sensational murder case was never solved. That all sounded like me up until I said his sensational murder case was never solved. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so this guy sounds like he had an interesting life. Uh, in the 20s, he went into the oil business. And he was unsuccessful. In the process, though, he did learn some powerful lessons about making timely investment decisions. He finally succeeded in the oil drilling in the 1940s due to the booming oil fields of southern Indiana, Illinois, and western Kentucky. His he oil leases on him. He bought leases on the land, um, you know, mineral leases. Okay. His uh, business, his oil business, was managed by Kentucky native William Billy Gorman who died a mysterious horse riding accident in 1974. In 49, Ryan gave an inscribed gold keychain to Las Vegas mobster Davey, Davey Berman that read DB from Ray Ryan, 1949. Yet in the 60s, Ryan was reported to have testified against the mob in an FBI case, a factor that could have been linked to his eventual murder in 77. Another testified against Marshall Cofano. Oh, oh, against Marshall. 1964. 1964. Okay. He took Marshall away for 10 years. Got it. Another theory is that he was alleged to have cheated mob connected gambler Nick the Greek in poker for over half a million in 1949. And old resentments over this had flared up. Well, you know what? That'd be like in today's money, that'd be like uh, $12.5 million. That's a lot of money to screw somebody out of. Nick the Greek had to have been pissed. And Marshall would kill you for $500. <laughs> yeah, Joey Iupa whack you for a ham sandwich. Uh-oh, <laughs> let's not get that started. In, in the 1950s and 60s, Ryan was a land developer in Palm Springs, California. Real estate developments in Palm Springs did not generate much, much interest until actor Clark Gable built a home there. Ryan joined with 24 other investors to purchase the rundown El Mirador Hotel in Palm Springs. El At Matador. El Mirador. Okay. Mir Mir it says Mirador. Meyer, My no, M Marader or Mirador. I think it's Mirador. Anyway, after restoring it to its former elegance, he, brought, uh, he bought out his partners in 1960. The list of regular guests included William Holden, Dean Martin, Gregory Peck, Paulette Goddard, Ginger Rogers, Luella Parsons, and Freeman Gosden, among others. Howard Hughes secured a separate cottage to ins ensure privacy. Man, Howard Hughes involved in that, too. Damn. In 62, Ryan, with partner Ernie Dun 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 Dunlevy, opened the Bermuda Dunes Country Club, which later became a host club for the Bob Hope Classic Golf Tournament, and where Clark Gable built a home on the 6th Fairway. Ryan was the target of a public IRS audit in the 70s over some disallowed deductions stemming from his involvement in the development of Mount Kenya Safari Club in Nanyuki, Kenya, with actor William Holden. What the hell is he doing building... A club, a safari club. Oh, I guess a safari club. Okay, so you yeah, they went over the. They there are big hunters. Big money in that. Oh yeah, big money in that. People pay big money to go over there and go kill whatever it is. You know, what do you think about that, Red? I think it's a a really expensive hunt club. <laughs> really. It is. It is. I mean, you know, the, some it's people say least. he didn't take. Uh, he didn't advertise in papers. He invited people. It was uh, for the elite. Bill Holden. Bill Holden was uh, he was a good actor then, and he controlled a lot of things with the unions and everything else. Yeah, usually these guys that go and hunt in those uh, safaris. I have a couple friends that do that. I've never gone. I'm I'm not that wealthy. Um, I'd like to do that one day, maybe. I don't know. Anyway, I think I start with something smaller, like a deer. But um, that's but how they, I start. That's how I started. <laughs> when they when they, when they when they go and, and hunt in uh you know like Kenya or something, they feed a whole village with that meat. I mean, it's not like it's wasted. Like they just no. kill it and then walk away. 
everything gets used and consumed. So they took the trophy heads and gave the meat to the natives. Yeah, yeah, right. That's that's. I, I don't see anything wrong with that. I anyway. do the same thing here. <laughs> All right, so murder in Evansville, Indiana. In 1964, Marshall Caifano was convicted of extorting $60,000 from Ryan, who testified against him. The conviction was upheld in 1966, and Caifano was sentenced to 10 years in prison. This is when Marshall went away, right? And then everything fell apart yeah. for him. Because he, he got also out. Vegas fell apart. He wanted to put everything back together, and it just wasn't, it wasn't going to happen. And I didn't meet him until 1974 when he got out of prison. All right. So when he was released in prison in the 70s, Ryan reportedly offered him $1 million in restitution. However, on October 18th, 77, Ryan was killed. I wonder who killed him. They said his Bobby murder. Rogers testified before a grand jury that him and Marshall had planned how to kill him. And the report from the local police there said that. Uh, it was an ignition. When he turned on the ignition, it went. But it was done with a genie remote control garage door opener. They wanted to make sure no children were around because it was right next to a school. And if you look at the damaged property, I mean, that car went all up. There was nothing left. Wow. Damn. All right. There's so no doubt in my mind who did it. <laughs> So Ryan went to a health club, as he often did. When he finished his workout, he walked outside to his new Lincoln Mark V coupe. However, someone had connected a bomb to the ignition of the car. As soon as Ryan turned the key, Ryan's car exploded violently. The impact of the explosion killed Ryan almost instantly. It took investigators two days to locate and collect all the pieces of the car. One piece of metal was located 377 feet from the scene of the explosion. Damn, 377 feet. And the fence was right next to a school where he huh. parked his car. They were worried about the school, that you know people might be damaged in the school. But there were parts found in their parking lot, on the roof too. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Michael Graham, trucking executive Michael... Cagnoni. Cagnoni uh, was blown up in a car bomb that worked remotely with a garage door opener as his car exited a suburban Chicago expressway. Wonder I if Cagnoni did on that too. I think we know who did that. Well, well, that's how they did Lefty uh, Rosenthal as well. They uh, uh, remote that particular that car. That particular car. Uh, I believe Frank talked about it. How they walked away and they sweeped everything away. Mm -hmm. uh, that was. Uh, What's his name? Uh, Bushelhead. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the Cagnoni job. Um, just a little off topic, uh, but um, the crowd said, uh, ride motorcycles. Cars can be bombs. I'd hate to have a, bo a bomb on a motorcycle underneath the oh, seat. Do you believe that? Patriots went not with all these people texting and driving. Red, <laughs> out here, no, listen, out here, when I'm doing – and driving around town when the light turns green at a major intersection i wait like two beats before i let my foot off the brake i look and i wait the other day i was doing a mob tour and the light turned green i'm gonna start to go okay i wait wait i look here comes a girl she's literally dude she's like this she's like this what i see this is what i see going by I swear to God, this is what I see her doing. I, I right through a red light. I'm telling you, man. I'm I've had it with the with the. It's crazy. It's getting fucking stupid. It really is. It's getting stupid. Big Mo, you're absolutely right. The Cagnoni bomb was set to go off after it passed a van with a repeater in it. That wasn't a repeater. It was a remote control. Wait, it was set to go off after it passed a van with a repeater in it. Well, the repeater was something to boost the signal. The remote, from the remote control. control device to set it off. So, okay. Wow. Interesting. You know, they, uh, <laughs> Joey Ayupa, I just saw someone with a book driving and reading it. I wanted to whack them. 
No, no shit. I'm serious. It's getting stupid. It really is. Uh, smart man, Adam, but they still managed to get you. Patriots win. Sometimes you can't avoid it, especially yeah. they come up from behind you. You know what I mean? And you don't, you're not, well, I mean, I watch, I'm constantly in every mirror. I'm constantly glancing around at the, it's, it's, yeah. I see truckers driving with the phone in one hand. They're dangerous these days. Just, Scott H has been on the road. Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you when you get out here too. Hopefully the crime tour is ready and I can take you out on the crime tour. That's yeah. almost ready to launch. I've been working my tail off on it. Big Mo, Nick Calabri stated that when he got sick, when Cagnoni's wife and kid got in the car one day and drove the other way. That's correct. That's sick. He got sick when Cagnoni's sick wife. Stomach. Yeah. Too oh, well. you mean the, the, the wife, the wait, you mean that his wife got into the car? They the were guy, laying on him and the wife, wife and kid got in the car and they and went drove. the other direction. Thank God. If they'd have gone the other way, they'd have gone off. It would have gone off. Oh my God. Wow. That's crazy, man. You imagine that? Yes. Holy shit. By the way, folks, hit that like button. I need all the help I can get. Give me some likes here. Show me some love. Please. Yeah, hit the like button. I'm begging you. <laughs> yeah, Leanne, stay safe out there in your truck. I know you're out there driving a lot too. God um, bless you, Leanne. Yeah, exactly. God bless you. And I, I had a family member in Korea. He told me that they ride scooters and have three phones and tablets going all at once. <laughs> Are you serious? Insanity. That's crazy. I, 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 I was on my way to my mother's house, and I'm driving through the neighborhood. Slow little neighborhood, right? And I'm, I'm coming around. I'm coming around the corner. And as I come around this corner, and there's no stop signs. Everything's kind of like, you know, yield. You know, everybody yields to each other, and it's certainly him. Anyway, coming around this corner, and a kid on a on a scooter, he's got his phone out, and he literally comes around the corner, comes straight, like almost head on to me. He's gonna come at me head on. I pull my car off to the right, you know, what I'm trying to avoid him. He suddenly looks up and whoa, you know, and and, and I'm like, I look as I pass him, I'm like, like, are you fucking out of your mind? I'm sorry. I'm saying that word too much. <laughs> I'm you out of your mind. He looked at me. He literally looked back at me. He said, you stand on your side of the road. I'm like, are you kidding me? He literally is going to make this my fault because he's looking at his phone while he's seriously. Oh. Adam, Adam, for the folks out there, a lot yeah. of times Adam and I are talking on the phone while he's driving home and he has road rage. He said, can you believe that? And I can't see it. What is it, Adam? What is it? This guy pulled out right in front of me. This guy's um, pushing me over out of my lane. It's unbelievable. Yeah. I saw a chick putting makeup on for five miles while she was driving. I've seen I've seen that going on too. I see that happening too. You're like, what? Get up a little earlier. You know what I mean? All right. Uh, fact, Michael Graham, following the Cagnoni car bombing, the garage door device was found taped to the guardrail of the exit ramp. That's what I was telling you. Cagnoni's car came within the range of the bomb, was automatically activated. Yeah, so so they 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 it wasn't a business, somebody didn't sit there and hit the button. It no. was set to just automatically kaboom when it got yeah. there. Man. It had a nine volt battery, a little nine volt battery, and it was just sig not enough signal to get to the road. They they taped it to a tree. Yeah, yeah. But if they'd go on the other direction, like the the uh, mother and children, they missed it because they went the wrong way. Uh, all right, Midland Power Wash, show idea. Discuss when Joey the Clown killed the hotel owner. What hotel owner, Brad? I don't know of any hotel owner he killed. I know he was uh, he was out at uh, Crossroads with uh, Huff when Frank Schweiss try, tried to kill a a hotel owner out there, Huff. And uh, uh, he tried to run Frank Schweiss over and John Flood at that time. But that was, I don't I don't know of any motel owner, hotel owner, motel owner that he tried to kill. I really don't. Hmm. Well, uh, texting while driving is a Darwin Award waiting to happen, yeah. <laughs> 
It sure is. Okay, so let's get back to this murder here. Um, the um, the the murder. It says it's unsolved. That's it. That's the end of the. That's the end of it. They that never was, solved uh, any one of Marshall Cavano's murders ever. All they ever got him for was extortion. They never solved any of them that he did, and he was a heavy going all the way back uh, when he was partners with uh, Sam Giancana, going all the way back then. Teddy mm -hmm. Rowe, all that baloney, all the way back then. He was around. He, he was an old timer. Actually, I'm kind of lucky that I was around him, period. But he always treated me real nice. He was a good man. Um, I recently put an article on uh, uh, Facebook about when Frank Schweiss was building the meat block in 1974. Marshall was hanging out there. Tony was hanging out there. Tony Spilaccio uh, and uh, Joey Lombardo. Phil Aldericio, they were all hanging out there. And they I'd go to lunch with them. They come over. I was building the store at the time. They come over and pick me up. We go to lunch together. I posted on my page and Facebook. Uh huh. Oh, Patriots Win, you're talking about Manny Scar. Manny Scar, yeah. What, 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 That's the one that Joey Lombardo did kill. I did a video on hotel owner Manny Scar. Lombardo whacked him. Yes. Uh, that's what uh, Anthony just said. That's a fact. Um, Allegedly, that's when he made his bones, so to speak. That's the first murder we know of. Um, At that time, he was just a thief. He worked with Schweiss and some other people, Tony Spilaccio, other people stealing. Jimmy Cozo, all those guys, all from the Grand Avenue crew. They were all thieves. They started out as thieves. See, see, see this is this is not a. <laughs> okay, um, okay. So this is probably bad campaigning. All right, I'm just going to throw this out there. Uh, Sheriff Joe Lombardo is running for governor out here in. Bay. I got to share my screen with you. You guys got to see this. So, so, so. Uh, it used to say share. Now it says present. Look at that present screen. It used to say share screen. You notice that right at the bottom? That just threw yeah. me up. They updated the software. Um, here, look at this screen. So here's my screen. I just typed in Manny Scar, okay? And then I typed Manny Scar, Joe Lombardo, right? Now, I'm just saying, if you're running for governor, you shouldn't run ads Okay, at the top of the page, can we trust Joe Lombardo? Joe will make government work when we're searching for mobsters. <laughs> Not a good idea, right? It's just bad campaign. It's bad. So anyway, this is the Joe Lombardo we're talking about over here. And um, and uh, where does it say Scar? Man, he said he, said he just came in from the deli, and people say he was clutching his salami. <laughs> He just came oh, home. Anthony. He died clutching his salami. <laughs> Red, was there a, was there a more money making scheme than the skim out of Vegas in all the history of the mob? That was a pretty big big skim, but we were about Francis stole all that gasoline money. Uh, yeah, but he's talking out of Vegas. He's talking out of Las Vegas. Um, oh, out of Vegas. No, any any other skims out of. Las Vegas. Out of Vegas. Scheme. No, any other money making scheme than the skim out of Vegas? No. The, the no. skim was the biggest one? Yeah. Out of everything. Not only the skim, but they, they got rewards for or finder's fee um, when they okayed a loan. So when they okayed the loan, they got, you know, X amount of dollars, three million, whatever, something like that, 1.4 million. And that happened a lot. So actually, the cash cow. Was yeah. the Teamsters Venture Fund, and that was their real money out of Vegas. Vegas was a a funnel; it just funneled the money back in. Got it. So, um, salami clutching sounds good as so long as the right person does the clutching. <laughs> Uh, Brad, did I tell you that the other day I uh, masturbated and then I uh, went downstairs and I made myself a sandwich? Oh, no. Here we go. 
I think I found the one. <laughs> uh, Scott H. Yeah, that's what I say. That's right. Uh, I don't think that the gas tax lasted as long as the casino skin patriots. No, not at all. I don't know. I don't even know how long that lasted. To be no, honest, it was only about eight years. Was it so that yeah, the skim went on for a good good amount of time. So oh yeah. Uh, you have any Willie's potatoes? In, Willie potatoes info on Willie potatoes? The Dino? No, I really don't. Willie the Dino. That's Dino. That's Willie potatoes. The Dino. The Dino. I thought it was the Dino. The Dino. The Dino. We call him the Dino. I, I knew think... I knew his uh, his uh, son. Um, mm -mm. Francy Brady, that butcher boy. Where? <laughs> Okay. Dino. What about Anthony Jeeps to Dino. Tony to Dino. All right, all right. Anthony to Dino. I thought it's potatoes. Willie Potatoes. Last name was to Dino. Willie Potatoes. Hold on. Willie Potato. Just type in Willie to Dino. You'll find it. It's Willie Potatoes to Dino. D A D D A N O. To Dino. Uh, <laughs> it's not Dino. It's I, Dino. Anyway, yeah. these potatoes. You know, trust me. Prancy Brady, that butcher boy. Where? <laughs> now I'm getting it. It's the Dino. I'm looking at it. Well, it's I was in Chicago. I knew him, and he told me his name was the Dino. Okay? okay. All right. I'm with you on this. <laughs> Da Dono, Primo said. See? Da Dono. Did Primo meet him? Hey, I don't know if Primo met him. I have no idea. I Michael. did. <laughs> Adam, don't beat your fish. Moody Mooch, Moody Mooch, Emily introduced me to him. Now, are we going to call him Evil Eye or Ebony? Ebony. It's, it's Louis Ebony, right? Right. Okay. But he called him the Dino. Uh, drink. <laughs> Here we go. Another one. <laughs> uh, you're going to have to switch to crows soon, Joey Ayupa. You're going to have to switch to crows soon. Uh, hi, I'm I'm a a you just woke up. It's 3.40 in the afternoon in Vegas. Yeah, but he's in Vietnam. Oh, Robert Greco's in Vietnam. Just yes. woke up. Yeah, that's right. You're in Na Trang City, Vietnam, man. Welcome to the show again. Good to see you. Thank you, Robert. God bless you. God bless you, guy. <laughs> we aim for the win. Uh, Michael Graham, Chicago Teamsters official Dominic Sinise survived a car bomb and needed facial reconstruction. However, a few years later, his son, Lucian Sinise. <laughs> Here we go. It's Lucian Sinise was killed. Lucian. Lucian. Lucian Sinise was killed in a car bomb detonated by a garage opener. Right. That's a fact. He survived the car bombing, but then his son was killed in a car bombing. That's I'm sure crazy. it was an accident. It was meant for his father. Um. There's Leanne. Hi, Leanne. How you doing? Roll along on my channel. Thank you, dear. I'm listening to something. Go ahead. I'm, I'm Scott H. Scott H. says he's remembered my last show. He says, "Can you still get good weed in Vietnam?" <laughs> oh, it's the Dono. It's the Dono. It's the Dono. Red. It's the Dono. Hundred percent. Still got. <laughs> All right. So. Um, Sounds like mob guys should just get in an Uber. Yeah, no kidding, right? All these car bombs going off, kaboom, kaboom. You know, and you know, the first FBI. Well, yeah, when the Uber gets out and says, "Wait a second, I'm going to get a candy bar." Yeah. Oh, you know, you never know. The first if FBI. They're going to get you. They're going to get you. <laughs> exactly. First FBI agent that was. Uh, Killed here in town in Vegas. Vegas' very first FBI agent, he was car bombed on the Nevada Bank building downtown. Really? 
Yeah, left a big hole in the in the uh, uh, con uh, the uh, the concrete of the garage floor. So the parking garage. Anyway. The only uh, FBI agent that I had ever knew, in, knew of in Ch Chicago that got killed, uh -huh. uh, it, it really gave me a wake-up call. He um, he was shot and killed, and the guy fled. And he made it up to Wisconsin for like four months. This guy was hiding out. Well, when they went up to get him, mm -hmm. they didn't even say anything. They just opened up and shot the whole house up and killed him. Damn. Because that's in their playbook. You kill one of us, we kill you. We don't take you alive. Wow. That, could have, that guy could have walked out stripped naked with his hands in the air, and he'd, he'd have been ventilated right there. Wow. Yeah, the FBI agent in Vegas, his name was um, Bill Coldhart. Coldhart. That was his, and it happened in 72. It was part of the crime tour, so it's something I'm trying to commit to memory right now. You can bet Tony wasn't involved in that. No, as a matter of fact, it was um, supposedly Tom Hanley and Gramley Hanley. They were a father-son hit team. The Hanley, the Hanley, they, yeah, the Hanley team. They, they were father-son hit team in Vegas, and they probably bombed his car for Benny Binion because Benny was, although Benny was never convicted of it, let me put that out there, but he was probably the one who sent him to do it. And they he were all questioned. He was questioned on it. Right. They were also the hit team that killed Bramley, the father's son they killed. They bombed, uh, they shot Al Bramley. He was head of the um, culinary union here in town. And uh, he wants some of his restaurants. He wanted some of the restaurants in town to go union and they wouldn't. So he hired the, the uh, father's son to put bombs in the restaurants. So he bombed a couple of restaurants and then he asked him to do two car bombings and both of them were defused by the police. So he refused to pay him. He said, you didn't make the bombs didn't go off, so I'm not paying you. <laughs> you, don't, you can't not pay your hitman, okay? <laughs> if you, you can't go, no, you know what? You, you got to pay the hitman because if not, he's going to come kill you. That's right. <laughs> Found out the hard way on that one. All right. Yes, if the casino skin was the biggest money maker in the history of the mob, why do people care if Tony was made or not? He was in charge. Whether he was made or not is a mute point. That's correct. Most of you people that are fans, you care about him being made. Tony never really worried about it. He knew where he stood. Well, I mean, if, it, if you're bringing in that much money, does it matter? No. If you're earning that much, it doesn't matter, right? No, and he bought land off the strip and all kinds of stuff. He had millions and millions of dollars invested. Of course, IRS took it all, but. Um, Benny Binion's son was a drug addict and was murdered, Ted Binion. And uh, yes, there's a, there's a lot about that. And uh, I'm learning about that right now, too. It's, Las Vegas has a lot of history of murdering people. <laughs> and Al Bramlett, the head, the head of the union guy that the hitmen murdered for not paying, he was kicking money back to Chicago. He was tied in to, the, I mean, it's the whole thing. You know what I mean? He was tied they into the, they got the okay. Chicago must have sent the word out there to do it. Man, every freaking union in town, every restaurant, every it's like they had their hand on everything. It wasn't just this casinos. It was everything. Yeah. Chicago Joey didn't care much about Joey Joey Impus, Impus, sure. Tony was pretty much capo of Vegas, but was under Joe Lombardo of the Grand Avenue crew i believe that's yeah. correct that's correct um they they were equals tony and, and joe but because joe was in chicago and tony was out here tony had to answer to joe had it been the other way around joe would have had to answer to tony that's correct so now you understand that okay they're all part of the same crew right phil, oral derecio mm -hmm. milwaukee phil um, the exchange rate is great. is great. I now think that Russia put too much U.S. dollar into Vietnam. No. The gold store not pay five percent more back. Black, not the black, black market price. price. Crazy shit happening in Asia. Wow. 
I stop at Pinecone quite a lot. The food is amazing. What's Pinecone? I don't know. Huh. Oh, here we go. William, Leanne, if you ever drive to Wisconsin, drop by the Pinecone Truck Stop in Johnson Creek. Great Eats, No Lot Lizards. John, no Lot Lizards. <laughs> I haven't heard of no Lot Lizards. Honest to God, really, Kraut. You hear state just got to worry about lot lizards. Maybe she does. Do you, Leanne? Now we all want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Inquiring minds. <laughs> I drive a 2023 white Mac. Damn, we got a brand new truck too, huh? Nice. I like that. That's nice. nice. Truck. Um, the guy who sent me to Vegas was Tom Hanley from here one in Chicago. Jim Arnold was the head of the culinary union in Vegas then. That's right. Tom Hanley. Was it the same Tom Hanley? Yeah. No, no, no. Seriously, Anthony, was it the same Tom Hanley? Yes. Or was he out in Chicago and sent? Come on. Seriously. Or That's what I was telling you last was night. I knew the Hanley company. name. Did the Grand and Ogden crew get dissolved or morphed into another crew? When? Well, I'm Jim Magnifici's asking this, and I'm just saying I don't think that it's you know gonna you know, yeah. I would imagine I, I only a guess, Jim. Um, it kind of got dispersed. People so went with other people. This is coming from an unknown source, okay? But supposedly some of the crews pushed together. That's what I heard. So I don't know if that's true or not. So, I would guess. I would guess. There wasn't enough left of the Grand Avenue crew. I mean, Frankie Schweiss went over to La Piatra's crew, and you know, people went around. It was Ed and Tom Hanley, both union big shots at here. Yes. At here, here, at here. Chicago. At here. No, no, I don't think that's what Anthony's saying. Hold on. I think H E R E stands for um, a union. Hold on. Could be. I just no. I just read it. I just read it somewhere else. That's why. Unite here. Leanne, Leanne, rolling along. Last two trucks were both brand new. It's a, I'm it's on my a, fifth truck right now. Well, you must put a lot of miles on that. It's a labor I like union. I like Mack trucks. It's it's a labor union. The hotel employees and restaurant employees. There it is. Hotel employees and restaurant employees union. Yes. Okay. So, got it. Thank you. Okay. Got it. Um, Hit that like button, folks. Give yeah, me some it. love here. Give me some likes. God knows I need it. Call me. Uh, with a good guy, I work at Hogan's Pub as a kid. My Aunt Marie were here, and I think my cousin Puggy Frankie might have worked at Hoagie's Pub there, too. Puggy! It's his cousin? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, um... Truckers and bikers, last nights of the road. Exactly. They sure are. This one's for you. Red, is Pudgy active in your opinion? I don't know. Adam, do you think he's active? I think he's retired. Yeah. I think he's retired. That's my thoughts. So... Yes, that's who we're talking about. <laughs> okay. And other opinions are Pudgy is very active. Okay, if you think so. That's what we're here about, opinions. We all have opinions. My other educated guesses, that's all. Okay, so, Red, um, Luchin. Luchin, right? Who was okay, and and then we just read that, and that was in the um that was in the Wikipedia page, right? Of Ray, um, Ray Ryan, 
Ray Ryan. Okay. So, so I, I just got word here that, um, that, that Luchin was not bombed. He did not die in the car bombing. And his father was shot in the face and wasn't killed. Shot in the face and wasn't killed. Yeah, it says that he, he, he that he, he, yeah, the Brian the bomb, yeah, it didn't happen. He was not, um, where does it say that Luchin was, where did I read that? Ryan's car explosively. No, where, where was that, Brad? Herman, I, I don't remember. Herman, um, so but was- just got caught, UST got caught on a beef on social security fraud. That doesn't necessarily mean he's active in the outfit. I mean, the outfit is somebody you kick up money to. Anyway, what's that got to do with Marshall Capano <laughs> and Ray Ryan? <laughs> no idea. Oh, Ryan. I have no idea. He was a, a dapper, a very nice dapper, multimillionaire. And it seemed that Cafano um, drifted towards these multimillionaires. He liked to be around multimillionaires. And then he put the arm on him. Hmm. I won't kill you if you give me money. Unbelievable, huh? And he wasn't looking for nickel dime money. He was looking for big money. Sure. That's how they. That's how they. Uh, that's how they did it. So. Oh, yeah. Anyway, there wasn't anything left. I don't think there were toes left to Ray Ryan when that was over. There was nothing left. Oh. Look at the crowd is going to meet with Leanne at the pine cone. They're going to go have lunch. That's great. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? And when our viewers get together. It's freaking crazy. In my opinion, from what I heard from shady fam- family shady family members, you know shady uncles that Dino Marino is a boss and Nick Cariola's underboss. What? Shady uncles that I've heard from shady family members, you know. Sh- I have no idea, guys. That's I don't something. understand that at all. I don't understand any of that. Uh oh, the Mandela effect is happening. Really? What's going on there? Yeah, that's exactly. Adam, Lucian Sinise car bomb took place. 1006 South May Street. May Street. Okay. Um, Herman Spelcher, Pudgy holds a lot of weight. No pun intended. <laughs> And he does get a tribute from street guys. They don't uh, call him no. Pudgy for nothing. <laughs> I don't know about any of this, guys. I'm just saying that's what the comments are coming up here on the screen. I don't know any of this, if that's true or not. I, I'd never even assume anything that it would be or not. Well, so. people, just like this comment here, I hear yeah. things. You hear things. Rumors. Yeah. <laughs> not too many people on the inside are actually talking yeah, you know, uh, uh, William Kirchmeyer, your opinion on Willie G and what he did to the real biker world. Well, who are you guys talking about? Willie I don't G. Know who Willie G is. Where the hell are they going with the show today, Red? This is getting no all over the place, aren't they? I'll tell you what we're going to do with the show, though. Thank <laughs> you all for stopping by. Thank you very much. And hope you have a great week. And Adam, thank you for stopping by. Thank hey. you for doing the show with me. Yeah. And hey, Kraut, um, give Leanne at least an hour, take, give or take an hour. She's not sure when she's exactly going to be coming through there. So give her some time. <laughs> so now, on. <laughs> it's been fun, Red. I'm going to take us out. 2022, folks. I'll see you Monday. God bless. God bless you, Adam. God bless you, Rod. See ya. The combination of the videotapes and we met's testimony resulted in the conviction.